Hello and welcome to episode 208 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is November 13th, 2023. And the reason I'm wearing so many things is not that it's that cold in my shop. It tends to be cold here. <laughs> But the reason is that I wanted to, sh to uh, wear this um, cowl and I thought it'd be nice to show the whole collection. But I think I'll take the hat off now. <laughs> It's uh, actually a bit too warm to be wearing this inside. Yeah, so all three of uh, the these three projects, the hat, the mitts and the cowl are all by Tin Can Knits. And I'll start with that uh, before I go into the projects themselves. Uh, I already mentioned the Tin Can Knit app last week that helps you knit Tin Can Knits patterns. And one of the best features of the app is that If you knit one of their garments that usually come in many, many sizes and sometimes even several yarn weights, you can choose which yarn weight you're going to use, which size you want to knit. You can pick like the sleeve length or maybe uh, the shaping or whatever. And you choose all these things and then the app only shows the numbers that you need for your size, for your yarn choice. And it makes knitting the patterns so much easier. So I think it's a fantastic app and if you download it, it's free. You already get all the free patterns and these are three of them um, with the app. And um, But they are working on uh, sort of programming all their other patterns into this app. But it's a lot of work and they need some um, like a little help <laughs> to, to pay for all the work. And so they've asked people to um, maybe donate some money. But you're not just donating the money. If you do give Tin Can Knit some money, you'll get something in return. And there are several, um, I think, price levels that you can give. But the, um, the lowest level is $20. And if you give them $20, you get three pattern... Um, what's it called? Oh, I forgot the name, the word for it. But um, you can get three of their patterns. And you can either buy some of the patterns that they've already published or you can wait for the for future patterns and you can um, get three of their patterns. And I think depending on what you choose, that might be even more than $20. So you're not really giving away money, but you're, you're just buying uh, the patterns in a different way. And uh, so I did that last week um, because I really want to support Tinker Knits and I love their patterns. And I was quite surprised that I got another pattern for donating the money. So there's a pattern that they've designed, a new pattern um, for a DK weight top-down pullover with the lace pattern and some bubbles in the pattern. A very beautiful pattern. But I think you only get this um, pattern or you can the whole donation thing, I think sort of comes to an end sometime around next week or end of this week. I'm not 100% sure, but um, so in case you hadn't heard of it or you hadn't made up your mind yet, I can only encourage you to do that. You donate $20, but you get at the moment four patterns. One you can't choose, but three that you can choose. So I think it's a really good deal and I would uh, encourage you to do that. And so wearing Tin Can Knit patterns was uh, my way of reminding myself to tell you. Now about these patterns. They are all part of the Simple Collection. The Simple Collections are free patterns that Tin Can knit, uh, knit have designed and just given to the public for free. They encourage people to use these patterns to teach knitting, which is what I do in my shop and in my knitting school here. So um, that's why I made these projects so I can show my customers. And um, one feature of their Simple collection patterns is that most of them have a mix of stockinette stitch and garter stitch and some ribbing. All, I think, I think they're part of all of the patterns. I'm not 100% sure right now, but it's it's um, definitely true for these patterns. So the hat is called Bali, and you start with the ribbing, and then you knit two thirds of the pattern in stockinette stitch, and one third in uh, garter stitch. One of the uh, most common mistake that people make is that they do reverse stockinette on this side. Doesn't matter, it still works as a hat. But if you do the reverse, uh, if you do the garter stitch, 
this side of the hat will be a little bit shorter than the rest so it'll be a little asymmetric which I think looks nice and then you can choose how to wear the hat you can wear this in the front or in the back I like to have this line sort of in the middle of my uh, on top of the middle of my face so I have one half the garter stitch the other half the stockinette stitch but that's just how I like to wear it and I used one strand of sock yarn and one strand of mohair held together to get gauge. Worked out really fine. And um, for the cowl and the gloves, I used um, the same sock yarn, but two different mohair yarns. So a lighter blue and a darker blue. And I also used both in the hat, but you can't really tell because I think I was striping it. I think I was doing so many rows with that mohair and then with the other mohair. And it just doesn't show but I still like the hat a lot the mitts are called maize and um, again you have oh no with these you I either made a mistake or you don't have the garter stitch so with these I actually knit um... oh you have reverse stockinette you have normal stockinette and you have ribbing so this is not stockinette it's just this ribbing that runs up from the ribbing down here to the ribbing up there and um, yeah simple to knit but you can learn things you can learn how to read patterns you can learn to take care of your knits and pearls and you do some increases for the thumb so very very nice pattern and then the cowl um, I think that has the three features again yeah so you have a ribbing on the bottom and up at the top of the um, cowl you have stockinette in between and then you have one part it's probably again a third in a garter stitch and again if you did it in reverse stockinette it would sort of look the same but you wouldn't have the height difference that you get with garter stitch so um, this bit is just a bit shorter just because of the garter stitch of course I can I can pull it apart to have make it at the same length but I quite like the asymmetric look of this and it will teach you to um, one round knit all the stitches and then the second round you have to purl just these stitches and that knit the rest of the stitches so it's really nice and with this uh, cowl you can see I use the same sock yarn throughout but I did one half with the darker mohair and the other half with the lighter mohair yeah really love these little projects, these little accessories, and um, it's a great way to practice your knitting and to, to um, learn some new skills. Yeah, so that's, that's that. And then the other um, big project I'm wearing is my um, hexagon crochet cardigan that we did as a crochet along not too long ago on the podcast and back then I wasn't I, I never wore it on the podcast because it was just too warm and now I can show you the finished project on me so you start the cardigan with two hexagons you start down here and you crochet in the round you crochet hexagons and you sort of create the front back and sleeve of the project at the same time and once you have the sleeve width that you want you can crochet or sew the sleeves together and then you can crochet in different directions I chose to use the red yarn with some blue for the main hexagon and then after I um, decided that the sleeves were wide enough I added some rows around the front and back in the blue yarn with the red so they're both opal yarns from their rainforest series and once I had the width of the front and back that I wanted I only crocheted down to get some more length and for the sleeves I added the red the leftover red yarn that I had to lengthen the sleeve and then crocheted the rest with the blue yarn again to uh, the, the length that I wanted and now I'm going to stand on my chair again as usual so you can see it's a really long cardigan I love the length of it I love how warm it keeps me I added one little pocket for the handkerchief and um, yeah really happy with that as well and um, once I had the length that I wanted I did 
three more rounds all round the edges so that I had a nice uh, finish, finishing look on the front of the cardigan. Yeah, so that's my crochet cardigan. And while I'm up here, I thought I could quickly show you another pair of my knee-high socks um, that you've seen that you've seen when I you saw it when I knitted it. That's what I'm trying to say, but I don't think I ever showed them on my feet and legs. Um, so these are out of the book Blue Stockings by Kate Davies. It's the first pattern in the book and it was the first pattern that I knit. So they're plain on the back, but they have this nice lace pattern running down the front of the leg and the top of the foot. And I really, really like them. And because they are just a single color, which is quite unusual for me, um, it means I can wear them with a lot of things. And it's kind of the same blue as in the in the cardigan. So um, yeah, I decided to wear them today and show them to you. <sighs> so that was already quite a lot just for the things I'm wearing, but I did wear a lot today. And um, yeah, there was some explaining to do. Okay, now let's go on with my projects, my current projects. And I have, um, sort of two finished projects. I have one proper finished object and then one small part of a project. And the finished project that I have today is not something that I cast on last week, but it's a project that has been on my needles for quite some while. And it's the Instant Crush socks that I knit for my sister. And um, as, sh as soon as she's back from her travels, I can give them to her. And I hope she'll be really happy. I knit them out of Apaka Sock Yarn by Hansa Farm. So they're wonderfully soft. And they um, have different lace patterns uh, for the foot and the short leg. And then they have this rolled edge that my sister quite likes. And then they have this little ruffle in between that has a little lace pattern as well. That's mostly invisible, but that's okay. Um, but I, I think she's going to enjoy just this little touch of something on top of um, her socks she probably be wearing <laughs> well if she wears black stockings underneath it will hardly show but uh, I hope she'll sometimes uh, just wear the socks like that and then it'll just show a little bit um, this was a warm-up pattern I think for the sock madness this year I think you can buy the pattern now on Ravelry um, but I have it linked underneath the video so you can check it out if you are interested. Yeah, really happy I finished the socks and uh, looking forward to give the, giving them to my sister. Um, the other project that I sort of finished is another dishcloth. I have a project running on Ravelry that says dishcloths and I meant to um, make a whole lot of them so that I can get rid of all the um, dishcloths that I bought over the years and um, yeah I keep not doing it so I've decided I have to get a move on and maybe I can manage one or two dishcloths a week. I know I've tried that before and it hasn't really worked so far but you can always try again can't you. So this is the one that I knit this last week. This is a cotton kapok mix um, that uh, a friend of mine gave me as a present to try out and see how it works to um, to use as a dishcloth. The pattern is a washcloth by Romy Hill. I um, I will try and link it in the dishcloth project underneath uh, on my Ravelry page. And uh, the reason I decided to knit the pattern now is that Romy has um, started a knit along for all her little projects. So she did two ebooks with um, little projects. The first one was Ottman's something and the second one I think is called Acts of Kindness and I usually buy all the ebooks that she um, comes out with because I love her designs and um, I've been wanting to knit this for a long time and now her knit along was a good reason to do it right now and it knit up really quickly. I really like the pattern and uh, very happy to have one more dishcloth in my collection. So these are the finished objects for today. Then on with works in progress. Um, the film reel sock for my nephew. Um, 
I added another film, um, sort of film reel. It's this dark film again. And um, yeah, so that means I only need one more film and the toe to finish this sock. And this is the second sock, so the pair will be done. I'm hoping to finish it this week, no promises, but it's one of the goals I have for this week. And the other sock that I have on the needles for this section of the video are the squiggly, heavily modified squiggly madness socks. That's based originally another um, sock madness pattern that was a bonus pattern. And the first pair that I knit was a lot closer to the original, but this one is heavily modified. <laughs> so basically the only thing that's left is um, uh, a contrast color stripe running down the front of the leg and the contrast color ribbing that does not have a pico cast on. <laughs> yeah, and I knit the heel according to the pattern and um, I finished the heel. So you knit the heel flap and then this this bit that I don't know what you call it. And uh, and I've just, start, I've just done the first decrease for the gusset, I think. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, um, the, the part where I had to concentrate and look at the pattern is done. Now I can just uh, do some sort of mindless knitting, except for the contrast color um, sock to be knit on the go and anywhere. So that's the socks. Then I continued knitting on the fingerless mitts that I'm knitting as part of the pattern battle, where we all knit with the same color um, of the subscription yarn the opal abo and um and i chose this pattern with these many many beads that were put on the yarn beforehand and um, this is the thumb stitches and i finished the hand so um, i actually did add one more pattern repeat i had enough uh, beads on my yarn to do that i even had enough yarn to do one more but i thought the height was quite nice now so this is how the um mitt fits and um, it gives me still gives me the freedom to use my fingers and to move them but the hand itself is warm and um, and I think yeah I now have the same number of pattern repeats underneath and above this reverse stockinette bit and I quite like the um, sort of symmetry of that there's another pico edge on top of the mid this is smaller than this one so I did that according to the pattern. There are more rounds here than you do here, but I think that's okay. So um, yeah, really happy. I now have to knit the thumb um, because that uses the same color beads. I only think I need one or two to finish the thumb. That's a fairly short thumb, but then I can um, take off the leftover beads that I have in that color and then I have to put on the other color beads because the second mid is going to get uh, a different color beads. Looking forward to starting that. So that's that. Then I continued knitting a few of those tiny rectangles that I am knitting for an old school friend of mine because he wants to examine the colors no idea why he does that and what he does it for, but um, <laughs> I think he said he was going to play around with these. <laughs> so I don't know, but I've just added, um, I think I've now used up all the colors that I had um, partial skeins already uh, or balls of yarn that I had used for something. And I think for the rest of the colors, I have to start new balls. So I there may be uh, several solid color project projects in my future. <laughs> Having used up just like two, three grams of each uh, ball, I will have to do something else with the leftovers, right? That's what I think. Then we come to my one new cast on this week, and that's a rather uh, curious story. And um, it's all about this yarn. So this is a, what's called eight ply yarn. Um, in Germany and it's one of Opal's colorways from last year. So um, Opal always comes out with one series of eight ply yarn every winter and uh, I think this was everybody's favorite color last year 
So um, it's called, it has a funny name. It's called The Crazy Snowman. And um, I kept one of those for myself, but I sold all the others. So I wouldn't, would have liked to make a pullover out of the yarn, but because everybody else wanted to have it as well, I sold the yarn and knit my pullover out of the other colorway that was similar to this one. But I did keep one of them for myself because um, I just liked it so much. One of my customers who actually knit a pullover out of this yarn bought a lot of it. And I predicted that she wasn't going to need all the yarn that she bought. And it turned out that she had a whole ball left after she finished the pullover and she gave it back to me. I picked up something else for it. And so I had two of those balls. And I had still no idea what to make with it. I thought it was a bit, it's probably too little to knit a whole pullover. Uh, and I couldn't decide what to do. Another ball of, and this ball of yarn, I actually sold to one of my friends rather close friends and she started knitting um, like wrist warmers or leg warmers I'm not quite sure what she had in mind when she started knitting them and then a few weeks ago she told me that she was probably going to rip them out because she didn't like them anymore and I said okay fine what are you going to do with the yarn then and then she said I don't know I don't really need the yarn anymore and I said how about you give the yarn to me I'll give you some other yarn and how about you don't rip out the leg warmers or wrist warmers because I need more of those. So she gave the one that she'd finished to me and she gave me the second one that she had probably knit about this much and I continued knitting this. So I just love these and they are wide enough of course to go over my arm but they're also wide enough to go over my leg so I have a choice where to wear them, how to wear them and uh, after I got this I decided I was going to use the other two skeins that I have to knit a um, not quite sure if it's called a vest but it's like a pullover without sleeves and um, there's a pattern in on YouTube that's quite popular in Germany and it's a pattern for a very very simple vest once I've put um, I've created the project on Ravelry I will link to that video and even if you don't understand German I think you can see what she's doing and it's really really simple and once I start it I'll explain how to knit that and I've always wanted to knit one of those because it's one of again it's a project that's very good for beginners because it's so simple and then I decided if I have this sleeveless pullover if I knit these longer if I knit them like a whole sleeve I can wear the sleeves and the sleeveless pullover and it'll be almost a pullover and would look really funny together or I could knit them uh, I could wear them on my legs and have the pullover and it would still match so that's the plan that I have now I've continued knitting on this and I will continue knitting on it until it has the length that I want then I'll undo the cast off of this um, mitt or no arm warmer, leg warmer, whatever, and I'll knit it to the same length as this one. And then I'm going to start the, the sleeveless pullover. So that's a plan, that's a new project that sort of came my way without me planning it, but I'm really happy with it now. So that's that. Then on to some more project that you know. I did indeed finish one half of the Stephen West shawl. Um, well, I finished half of Clue 3, that's what I'm trying to say. So this is this beautiful Clue 3 pattern and I actually managed to finish it. This is a rather horrible sight. Um, because of the pattern, I find it really difficult to do the Weave and Steven because you um, this is a slip stitch pattern, so you slip stitches and then when, when I've slip stitches I don't want to do the Weave and Steven anymore. So I try to do do the St Steven, Weave and Steven <laughs> with a few stitches if possible, but I think most of those ends I will actually uh, sit down and weave in a bit more to make it secure. And now that I've finished this bit, I again think it's a fairly small shawl. It's not tiny, but it's nowhere near huge. So it's a, it's like a middle size shawl, which is not something I expect from a Stephen West pattern. But I think it's because I used fairly thin yarn 
and I used a smaller needle than I usually do. So normally when I use sock yarn for shawls, I, I use a four millimeter needle, but because the alpaca sock yarn is a tiny bit thinner than the normal sock yarn, I, I'm knitting this with a 3.5 millimeter needle. Love the way this looks, took a very long time. <laughs> I've picked up the stitches that I put on hold on this side and I am knit two stripes. That's all I managed to do after I finished the first half. So there's one stripe in the dark gray and one stripe in the black. The next stripe is going to be the light gray and I've almost run out of the light gray that I used here and I didn't have a second ball in the same same yarn. <laughs> so this is the old sock yarn that Hansa Farm used to produce and now I, for this half I'm going to use the new sock yarn that they're doing which is a tiny little bit thicker. So we'll see whether there's going to be a difference between this side and that side. Um, but if there is, that's okay. I have different beads on this side and that side and um, it's all about improvising and it's always good to use up these leftover skeins of yarn that you have. So um, yeah, really looking forward to getting this light gray stripe done to see if there's a difference. And then hopefully by next week, I'll have more than one light gray stripe <laughs> done on this side. So that's that shawl. And um, then we come to the pullovers and I have the sock weight pullover, the V back T with a sparkly yarn. And I last week I showed you the cast off front and back. And last week I knit on the first sleeve and I managed to knit up the color two yarn that I wanted to use for this sleeve. So what I did is I used the leftover second color yarn, split it into two balls and I knit the first one into this sleeve. So that's all that's left. And I think I knit about half the sleeve. So really like the way this looks. I'm now going to put those stitches on the needle. I'm going to knit the first half of that sleeve. And by the time I finish that, I will have made up my mind whether to do the rest of the sleeve in the color three or the color one. Originally, I wanted to use color one, um, but as I got really far with this, I probably have enough yarn to um, finish the sleeve with the color three. And then I could use the color one to knit a cowl or something to go with the pullover. So that's, uh, that's an idea. Not 100% sure yet, but I still have half a sleeve to knit before I have to before I have to have made the decision, I think. <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's the V-back tee. Um, the other pullover, the other top, the Reina de Picas top, I finally managed to knit a longer cable into the pullover. So it's not hugely long. If it gets too long, I find it difficult to knit with it. So this is a good size. I don't have to, the, the stitches aren't quite as bunched up as they were on the other needle but it's still short enough that it's not too difficult to move the stitches along. I don't know exactly how many rows I did knit on this, but I definitely came across the next uh, wrap stitches here. So um, they do keep coming again. And, um, and I noticed them because they take quite a long time to... Um, to just do this maneuver and I'm always happy when <laughs> when that round's done. Uh, I have now knit about two thirds of the last chart. So there's um, I think about 12, something between 10 and 12 rounds that I still need to knit in the pattern. And as I've said before, I'm pretty sure that the yoke is going to be big enough as soon as I've finished the lace pattern. And then I'll have to see how to um, arrange the stitches, if, whether I need increases or not. And then as soon as I put the sleeve stitches on hold, it'll just be either stockinette or ribbing. So that should work out quite nicely. And I'm really interested to see how much yarn I will have used for the um, yoke because I only have the 100 gram ball of yarn. Yeah, should be interesting. So I'm still thinking of doing the ribbing for the sleeves 
from the other end of the ball so I can use up everything I have for the front and back. That's kind of the plan that I have at the moment. And if it is too short, if it should get too short, I can still get some more yarn. So that's not a problem. Yeah, so that's the summer top. And then I wanted to show you my son's pullover again. And I did take the, the collar out, the ribbing out, and I had a huge neckline. And I picked up the stitches and I then started knitting the garter stitch stitches that run down the sleeve. I just knit on those stitches to and fro and I knit one of them, I knit the last stitch of that row together with one stitch of the back and then on the other row I knit the last stitch together with one stitch of the front and I sort of worked my way up the shoulder towards the neck and I really wanted to show you how it looks while I was doing it and then I left it at home. I have no idea where I put it, I can't remember uh, why I didn't see it because it's a big project but I must have either put it in a strange place or put something on top, I don't know. I was really upset when I realized I hadn't brought it. Um, so one part of me wants to leave it the way it is so I can show you. The other part of me just wants to get it finished and even if it's finished I can still show you where I knit what and how I um, did what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm really sorry I can't show it to you today, but I'll show it to you next week, either finished or not finished. We'll see. <laughs> I will make sure it's the first thing I pack next week. Then we come to the crochet projects. I added a few rows to my crochet shawl. Um, again, not as much as I would have liked to do, but um, it's... It is slowly growing and I, every week I think I do have to get a move on. I really want to get this done. Um, I have oops, this much yarn left. So I'm still um, mixing the two yarns. I'm doing two rows, one color, two rows, the other color. And what, um, I was thinking of using up the whole ball of this and then finish with that. But that might be too little in just the one color because I had... I think I did about 30 rows just with the light color and I was thinking of doing about 30 rows of the dark color in the end. Um, at first I, I, I wanted to do fewer rows because I thought the rows were going to get longer and I didn't want too much in the dark color. But because the rows don't really get longer because you always stop crocheting some of some parts of it, I think the number of stitches doesn't really change that much once I had a certain number of stitches. So I might um, continue using both colors until I have about 30 rows or maybe a bit fewer than 30 rows left. And then I will just do the dark color just to get these two different ends of the shawl. So that's that. And then the pullover I'm crocheting out of the dark blue cotton yarn. Um, I continued the motif. And the interesting thing about the Rebecca motif by um, Shelley Husband is that the it sort of repeats itself. So this, what I crocheted here, I did again here. And again, I was asked to cut the yarn, which I did. And the reason is when you cut your yarn, there's a way of um, attaching the end of the round to the beginning of the round uh, by sewing that makes an invisible join. And the reason it is important at this point in the pattern is it's not only that you um, can start the row with crocheting into the back of the stitch easier when you start with a new um, strand of yarn but also the um, the outer edge that I have here sort of shows on the front of the work when you crochet into this third loop and I think it's quite uh, you can see quite nicely here so this is the these are the, the strands of yarn that you usually crochet into, but by crocheting into the third loop, the first two lie on the sort of on the surface of the project. And because you can see this, this line of stitches, it's um, really nice to have this invisible join because you can now look at this row of stitches and you won't be able to tell where the round started or ended. And it's, it's going to be the same with this round. And I think the same pattern is going to repeat one more time. So I really, really like that. So I, 
I am a big fan of Shelley Husband's uh, designs, and I think it's also these these small little things that she thinks of that sort of make her design so special. Yeah, so it's grown a bit, not huge yet. Um, not quite sure I'm going to get to the same point with the next pattern repeat, but I will try. I will try because I really enjoy crocheting that and I'd love to be at the next um, spot, at this spot in the next repeat. That'd be really fun. But if I don't manage next week, maybe the week after. <laughs> Not too much pressure. So those were the crochet projects. Oh, I forgot, down, forgot to write down the blankets, but um, it's a good thing I looked at them. So I added a few more squares to the green crochet blanket. So um, sort of getting too big to show the complete thing. So this is sort of the first half of the blanket. And then this is the second half. And this was the line of granny squares that I attached last week. I completed adding this line of granny squares and I've only attached the third round. So I just did the first step of attaching them um, by starting the first or crocheting onto the first side of each of the granny squares and at the same time attaching it to the uh, granny square next to it. So all I do is I do three either trebles or double crochets and then I do a slip stitch and that's the same I think <laughs> in both countries, a slip stitch in between the, um, the clusters of the other square and that's how I attach them and then I'm going to crochet down here around here, up here, and then when I crochet down this square, I can attach it to this one, go over there, go up, and when I go down, I'm going to attach them, and that way I'm going to work my way to this end, and then when I go down here, I'm going to attach those two, I'll crochet over there, and then I'm going to crochet up this side to finish to finish the um, this side because that hasn't been crocheted on yet and then I'll I'll end at the same point that I began attaching the squares so that's the that's how you crochet granny squares together continuously love the method so that's that and the other blanket my memories blanket I think I added two squares every time I pick up the blanket I think oh you need to do more squares per week but two is better than no so <laughs> so this is the alpaca sock yarn that I used together with this yarn to knit a hat. And this is some leftover yarn from my fragmentation shawl by Stephen West. So I was using this um, color out of the beauty series by Opal and it had three distinct colors with this light, uh, with this white speckled white in between the three, but the square is too small. So I only got two of the colors, but that's okay. And then I have to attach seven more squares to finish this row. And then I'll have, so this is the 12th row of squares in this blanket. Okay, and then we come to the sock, to the uh, knit along sock, uh, still knitting banana socks. And I did not knit a lot on this last week. So I think I only added those two reverse stockinette stripes. But that's okay. Did a lot on the other projects. Yeah, so that's everything I knit and crochet last week. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>